section ninety two of up one pair of stairs of my book house this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by anne boulet up one pair of stairs of my book house edited by olive beaupre miller thumbelisa by hans christian anderson there was once a woman who had the greatest longing for a little tiny child but she had no idea where to get one so she went to an old witch and said to her i do so long to have a little tiny child will you tell me where i can get one oh we shall be able to manage that said the witch here is a barley corn for you it is not at all the same kind as that which grows in the peasant's field or with which chickens are fed plant it in a flower pot and you will see what will appear thank you oh thank you said the woman and she gave the witch twelve pennies then went home and planted the barley corn a large handsome flower sprang up at once it looked exactly like a tulip but the petals were tightly shut just as if they were still in bud that is a lovely flower said the woman and she kissed the pretty red and yellow petals as she kissed it the flower burst open with a loud snap it was a real tulip you could see that but right in the middle of the flower on the green stool sat a little tiny girl most lovely and delicate she was not more than an inch in height so she was called thumbelisa her cradle was a smartly varnished walnut shell with the blue petals of violets for a mattress and a rose leaf to cover her she slept in it at night but during the day she played about on the table where the woman had placed a plate surrounded by a wreath of flowers a large tulip floated on the water and on this thumbelisa sat and sailed about from one side of the plate to the others she had two white horsehairs for oars it was a pretty sight she could sing too with such delicacy and charm as was never heard before one night as she lay on her pretty bed a great ugly frog hopped in at the window for there was a broken pane oh how hideous that great wet toad was it hopped right down on the table where thumbelisa lay fast asleep under the red rose leaf here is a lovely wife for my son said the toad and then she took up the walnut shell where thumbelisa slept and hopped away with it through the window down into the garden a great broad stream ran through the garden but just at the edge it was swampy and muddy and it was here that the toad lived with her son ugh how ugly and hideous he was too exactly like his mother crocks crocks but cr cr crocks that was all he had to say when he saw the lovely little girl in the walnut shell do not talk so loudly or you will wake her said the old toad she might escape us yet for she is as light as thistle-down we will put her on one of the broad water lily leaves out in the stream it will be just like an island to her she is so small and light she won't be able to run away from there while we get the stateroom ready down under the mud where you and she are to live a great many water lilies grew in the stream their broad green leaves looked as if they were floating on the surface of the water the leaf which was farthest from the shore was also the biggest and to this one the old toad swam with the walnut shell in which little thumbelisa lay the poor tiny creature woke up quite early in the morning and when she saw where she was she began to cry most bitterly for there was water on every side of the big green leaf and she could not reach the land at any point the old toad sat in the mud decking out her home with grasses and the buds of the yellow water lilies so as to have it very nice for the new daughter-in-law and then she swam out with her ugly son to the leaf where thumbelisa stood they wanted to fetch her pretty bed to place it in the chamber before they took her there the old toad made a deep curtsy in the water before her and said here is my son and you are to live most comfortably with us down in the mud crocks crocks but cre cre cracks that was all the son could say then they took the pretty little bed and swam away with it but thumbelisa sat quite alone on the green leaf and cried because she did not want to live with the ugly toad the little fish which swam about in the water had no doubt seen the toad and heard what she said so they stuck their heads up wishing i suppose to see the little girl 
as soon as they saw her they were delighted with her and were quite grieved to think that she was to go down to live with the ugly toad no that should never happen they flocked together down in the water round about the green stem which held the leaf she stood upon and gnawed at it with their teeth till it floated away down the stream carrying thumbelisa where the toad could not follow her thumbelisa sailed past place after place and the little birds in the bushes saw her and sang what a lovely little maid the leaf with her on it floated further and further away and in this manner reached foreign lands a pretty little white butterfly fluttered round and round her for some time and at last settled on the leaf for it had taken quite a fancy to thumbelisa she was so happy now because the toad could not reach her and she was sailing through such lovely scenes the sun shone on the water and it looked like liquid gold then she took her sash and tied one end round the butterfly and the other she made fast to the leaf which went gliding on quicker and quicker and she with it for she was standing on the leaf at this moment a big may bug came flying along he caught sight of her and in an instant he fixed his claw round her slender waist and flew off with her up into a tree but the green leaf floated down the stream and the butterfly with it for he was tied to it and could not get loose the may bug settled on the largest leaf on the tree and fed thumbelisa with honey from the flowers and he said that she was lovely although she was not a bit like a may bug presently all the other may bugs which lived in the tree came to visit them they looked at thumbelisa and the young lady may bugs twitched their feelers and said she has only got two legs what a poor appearance that makes she has no feelers said another she is so slender in the waist fie she looks like a human being how ugly she is said all the mother may bugs and yet little thumbelisa was so pretty that was certainly also the opinion of the may bug who had captured her but when all the others said she was ugly he at last began to believe it too and would not have anything more to do with her she might go wherever she liked they flew down from the tree with her and placed her on a daisy where she cried because she was so ugly that the may bugs would have nothing to do with her and after all she was more beautiful than anything you could imagine as delicate and transparent as the finest rose leaf poor little thumbelisa lived all the summer quite alone in the wood she plaited a bed of grass for herself and hung it up under a big dock leaf which sheltered her from the rain she sucked the honey from the flowers for her food and her drink was the dew which lay on the leaves in the morning in this way the summer and autumn passed but then came the winter all the birds which used to sing so sweetly to her flew away the great dock leaf under which she had lived shrivelled up leaving nothing but a dried yellow stalk and she shivered with the cold for her clothes were worn out it began to snow and every snowflake which fell upon her was like a whole shovel full upon one of us for we are big and she was only one inch in height then she wrapped herself up in a withered leaf but that did not warm her much she trembled with the cold close to the wood in which she had been living lay a large cornfield but the corn had long ago been carried away and nothing remained but the bare dry stubble which stood up out of the frozen ground the stubble was quite a forest for her to walk about in oh how she shook with the cold then she came to the door of a field mouse's home it was a little hole down under the stubble the field mouse lived so cosily and warm there her whole room was full of corn and she had a beautiful kitchen and larder besides poor thumbelisa stood just inside the door like any other beggar child and begged for a little piece of barley corn for she had had nothing to eat for two whole days you poor little thing said the field mouse for she was at bottom a good old field mouse come into my warm room and dine with me then as she took a fancy to thumbelisa she said you may with pleasure stay with me for the winter but you must keep my room clean and tidy and tell me stories for i am very fond of them and thumbelisa did what the good old field mouse desired and was on the whole very comfortable now we shall soon have a visitor said the field mouse my neighbor generally comes to see me every weekday he is even better housed than i am 
His rooms are very large, and he wears a most beautiful black velvet coat. If only you could get him for a husband, you would indeed be well settled, but he can't see. You must tell him all the most beautiful stories you know. But Thumbelisa did not like this, and she would have nothing to say to the neighbor, for he was a mole. He came and paid a visit in his black velvet coat. He was very rich and wise, said the field mouse, and his home was twenty times as large as hers. And he had much learning, but he did not like the sun or the beautiful flowers. In fact, he spoke slightingly of them, for he had never seen them. Thumbelisa had to sing to him, and she sang both, ladybug ladybug fly away home and a monk he wandered through the meadow the mole had just made a long tunnel through the ground from his home to theirs and he gave the field mouse and thumbelisa leave to walk in it whenever they liked he told them not to be afraid of the dead bird which was lying in the passage the mole took a piece of tinder wood in his mouth for that shines like fire in the dark and walked in front of them to light them in the long dark passage when they came to the place where the bird lay the mole thrust his broad nose up to the roof and pushed the earth up so as to make a big hole through which the daylight shone in the middle of the floor lay a swallow with its pretty wings closely pressed to its sides and the legs and head drawn in under the feathers thumbelisa was so sorry for it she loved all the little birds for they had twittered and sung so sweetly to her during the whole summer but the mole kicked it with his short legs and said now it will pipe no more it must be a miserable fate to be born a little bird thank heaven no child of mine can be a bird thumbelisa did not say anything but when the others turned their backs to the bird she stooped down and stroked aside the feathers which lay over its head and kissed its closed eyes perhaps it was this very bird which sang so sweetly to me in the summer she thought what pleasure it gave me the dear pretty bird the mole closed up the hole which let in the daylight and conducted the ladies to their home thumbelisa could not sleep at all in the night so she got up out of her bed and plaited a large handsome mat of hay and then she carried it down and spread it over the bird and lay some soft cotton wool which she had found in the field mouse's room close round its sides so that it might have a warm bed on the cold ground good-bye you sweet little bird she said good-bye and thank you for your sweet song through the summer when all the trees were green and the sun shone warmly upon us then she laid her head close up to the bird's breast, but was quite startled at a sound, as if something was thumping inside it. It was the bird's heart. The swallow was not dead, but lay there stiff with cold, and now that it had been warmed, it began to come to life again. In the autumn, all the swallows fly away to warm countries, but if one happens to be belated, it feels the cold so much that it falls down to the ground and remains lying where it falls till the snow covers it up the bird was very very big beside her thumbelisa who was only one inch high but she gathered up her courage packed the wool close around it fetched a leaf which she had used for her own coverlet and lay it over the bird's head the next night she crept down again to it and found it alive but it could only just open its eyes for a moment to look at thumbelisa who stood with a bit of tinder wood in her hand for she had no other lantern many many thanks you sweet child said the swallow to her you have warmed me beautifully i shall soon have strength to fly out into the warm sun again oh said she it is so cold outside it snows and freezes stay in your warm bed and i will tend you then she brought water to the swallow in a leaf and when it had drunk some it told her how it had torn its wing on a blackthorn bush and therefore could not fly as fast as the other swallows which were taking flight then for the distant warm lands at last it fell down on the ground but after that it remembered nothing and did not in the least know how it had got into the tunnel it stayed there all the winter and thumbelisa was good to it and grew very fond of it she did not tell either the mole or the field mouse anything about it for they did not like the swallow as soon as the spring came and the warmth of the sun penetrated the ground the swallow said good-bye to thumbelisa who opened the hole which the mole had made above 
the sun streamed in deliciously upon them and the swallow asked if she would not go with him she could sit upon his back and they would fly far away into the green wood but thumbelisa knew that it would grieve the old field mouse if she left her like that no i can't said thumbelisa good-bye good-bye then you kind pretty girl said the swallow and flew out into the sunshine thumbelisa looked after him and her eyes filled with tears for she was very fond of the swallow tweet tweet sang the bird and flew into the green wood thumbelisa was very sad she was not allowed to go out into the warm sunshine at all the corn which was sown in the field near the field mouse's house grew quite long it was a thick forest to the poor little girl who was only an inch high you must work at your outfit this summer said the mouse to her for their neighbor the tiresome mole in his black velvet coat had asked her to marry him you shall have both woolen and linen you shall have wherewith to clothe and cover yourself when you go to live with the mole thumbelisa had to turn the distaff and the field mouse hired four spiders to spin and weave day and night the mole paid a visit every evening and he was always saying that when the summer came to an end the sun would not shine nearly so warmly now it burnt the ground as hard as a stone yes when the summer was over he would take her to his home but thumbelisa was not at all pleased for she did not care a bit for the tiresome mole every morning at sunrise and every evening at sunset she used to creep out to the door and when the wind blew aside the tops of the corn stalks so that she could see the blue sky she thought how bright and lovely it was there and wished so much to see the dear swallow again but it never came back no doubt it was a long way off flying about in the beautiful green woods when the autumn came all thumbelisa's outfit was ready in four weeks you must be married said the field mouse to her but thumbelisa cried and said that she did not want to go and live with a tiresome mole fiddle dee dee said the field mouse don't be obstinate you are going to have a splendid husband the queen herself hasn't the equal of his black velvet coat both his kitchen and cellar are full so the mole had come to fetch thumbelisa she was to live deep down under the ground with him and never to go out into the warm sunshine for he could not bear it the poor child was very sad at the thought of bidding good-bye to the beautiful sun while she had been with the field mouse she had at least been allowed to look at it from the door good-bye you bright sun she said as she stretched out her arms towards it and went a little way outside the field mouse's house for now the harvest was over and only the stubble remained good-bye good-bye she said and threw her tiny arms round a little red flower growing there give my love to the dear swallow if you happen to see him tweet tweet she heard at this moment above her head she looked up it was the swallow just passing as soon as it saw thumbelisa it was delighted she told it how unwilling she was to live with the ugly mole deep down underground where the sun never shone she could not help crying about it the cold winter is coming said the swallow and i am going to fly away to warm countries will you go with me you could sit on my back tie yourself on with your sash then we will fly away from the ugly mole in his dark cavern far away over the mountains to those warm countries where the sun shines with greater splendor than here where it is always summer and there are heaps of flowers do fly with me you sweet little thumbelisa who saved my life when i lay frozen in the dark earthy passage yes i will go with you said thumbelisa seating herself on the bird's back with her feet on its outspread wing she tied her band tightly to one of the strongest feathers and then the swallow flew away high up in the air above the forests and lakes high up above the biggest mountains where the snow never melts and thumbelisa shivered in the cold air but then she crept under the bird's warm feathers and only stuck out her little head to look at the beautiful sights beneath her at last they reached the warm countries the sun shone with a warmer glow than here the sky was twice as high and the most beautiful green and blue grapes grew in clusters on the banks and hedgerows oranges and lemons hung in the woods which were fragrant with myrtles and sweet herbs and beautiful children ran about the roads playing with the large gorgeously colored butterflies 
but the swallow flew on and on and the country grew more and more beautiful under magnificent green trees on the shores of the blue sea stood a dazzling white marble palace of ancient date vines wreathed themselves round the stately pillars at the head of these there were countless nests and the swallow who carried thumbelisa lived in one of them here is my house said the swallow but if you will choose one of the gorgeous flowers growing down there i will place you in it and you will live as happily as you can wish that would be delightful she said and clapped her little hands a great white marble column had fallen to the ground and lay there broken in three pieces but between these the most lovely white flowers grew the swallow flew down with thumbelisa and put her upon one of the broad leaves what was her astonishment to find a little man in the middle of the flower as bright and transparent as if he had been made of glass he had a lovely golden crown upon his head and the most beautiful bright wings upon his shoulders he was no bigger than thumbelisa he was the angel of the flowers there was a similar little man or woman in every flower but he was the king of them all heavens how beautiful he is whispered thumbelisa to the swallow the swallow seemed a perfect giant of a bird to the little prince he who was so small and delicate but when he saw thumbelisa he was delighted she was the very prettiest maiden he had ever seen he therefore took the golden crown off his head and placed it on hers he asked her name and if she would be his queen of the flowers so she said yes to the beautiful prince and out of every flower stepped a little lady or a gentleman so lovely that it was a pleasure to look at them each one brought a gift to thumbelisa but the best of all was a pair of pretty wings from a large white fly they were fastened to her back and then she too could fly from flower to flower all was then delight and happiness but the swallow sat alone in his nest and sang to them as well as he could for his heart was heavy he was so fond of thumbelisa himself and would have wished never to part from her you shall not be called thumbelisa said the angel of the flowers to her that is such an ugly name and you are so pretty we will call you may good-bye good-bye said the swallow and he flew away again from the warm countries far away back to denmark there he had a little nest above the window where the man lived who wrote this story and he sang his tweet tweet to the man and so we have the whole story end of section ninety two